All right, well, so uh, we might as well get started um, as the people start joining us. Uh, today we're going to be talking about MedTC. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, four specific tools, TC pairs, TC stat, TC RMW, and um, TC gen. The first two um, tools we have a hands-on for, um, and I'll be running through that. Um, but today we have a guest lecturer, uh, Catherine Newman, who is uh, at NCAR and is um, part of the Developmental Testbed Center and has spent many years working with uh, hurricane forecasts, um, doing testing and evaluation of it, and using MET Plus, um, especially the MET TC tools for that. So we felt that this would be a, a um, good opportunity for, uh, for her to share some of her knowledge. So um, I'm also putting into the chat uh, a link to the survey um, that we, we are um, still taking uh, responses on. Um, John O, oh, are you there? Do you want to say anything about the survey? Yes, uh, thanks, Tara. Um, just a reminder, yeah, as Tara said, uh, we appreciate all of your feedback on this. So far, we've only gotten 12 responses, so really hoping that we can get back up to um, last survey's result, which is around 50. Um, anything you've got to share in terms of good or bad or otherwise, something constructive, we really rely on it. It helps us build a better um, session for you. Um, so please provide that feedback as soon as you can. We'll probably keep it open for another week. Um, thanks. All right. So with that, um, why don't I hand it over to Catherine so that she can dive in. We've, we still have a lot of material to cover, so might as well take advantage of all the time. So Catherine, are you ready to go? I am. Yeah, I can turn on my camera quick. Um, and then go back to full screen. There you go. I can see you. All right. Can you see? All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, um, so, you are so not in presentation mode. I'm point. not. No. Oh, OK. No. I might have a delay, but it still looks like a, just your your normal screen. Okay. My screen is full. Still not. I should have left no. it alone. Do you have two screens? Maybe you need to swap. I just have the one right now. Hmm. Okay. Is anybody else seeing um, it in presentation mode? And maybe it's just my. Uh, I am also. I mean, and I am not seeing it in presentation mode. It's in the normal. Let me just try resharing. Oh, I think I see. How about now? Yes. Okay, great. Better. Sorry about that. It's in full screen now. Uh, yes, it is. Take it away. Okay. okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So I am going to be discussing the MetTC tools, as Tara mentioned. Um, and so I'll just jump right in. Um, so, of course, this is the, the diagram that I'm sure everyone is very familiar with at this point. Um, and so for today, we're going to be discussing this bottom um, row that has the um, TCD land, TC pairs, and TC stat tools. Um, and so um, I'll step through each of those and how they work together. All right, so what is METTC? Um, so it's a set of tools that aid in TC forecast evaluation and verification. Um, it was originally uh, developed back, uh, I think, 2013 um, to replicate and add to the functionality of the NHC verification software. And so the reason why uh, we went ahead and put it in the, the MET tools um, was uh, to utilize the MET software framework to have a modular set of tools that could allow for additional capabilities and features to be added in future releases. And that's definitely happened um, with this toolkit. Um, there's been a lot of additions over the years as needs come up and it's really grown um, since its original implementation. So why use METTC? Um, pretty similar to you know, any of the justification for the other um, verification tools is that it provides um, you know, verification that's consistent with the operational centers, and um, it makes it easier to, to parse and subset um, data sets, and um, it, it gets everyone working in a centralized um, verification software that, um, so everyone's kind of working from the same, the same point. 
All right, so getting started. Um, so you'll need to know a little bit about the inputs um, that go into METTC. This may be um, review or, or basic information for some, but I'll go through it um, for those who haven't worked with the TC data before. So um, three big areas. So we'll need the best track analysis, which is primarily used as the ob observational data set in METTC. Um, you may use any reference data set that's in ATCF format, but um, the best track is kind of the, the standard. Um, then you'll need input files that are in ATCF format. And finally, you'll need a model output that will be run through an external vortex tracking algorithm. So I'm going to step through each of these three with a little bit more detail just to, to um, expand on those statements. So starting with the observations, um, observations are, of course, an important consideration for all verification, true for TC verification. Um, as far as Tropical cyclone verification, the quantity and the quality of observations available can typically be sparse or intermittent. Of course, there's been some, um, you know, platforms or, or uh, data that have come out that have been, you know, getting better over the years, but it still is an area where um, there are observation limited areas. And so we use the best track analysis primarily as the observational data set. Um, that's kind of the standard that's used at, at NHC as well and elsewhere. Um, and so you can find all of the operational um, aids for the different operational models and the best track analysis on the NHC FTP server that is listed at the bottom. And um, just to, to clarify that the best track is a subjective data set. So it's, it's based on the best information available. It is not an actual observation um, and it's also not consistent across basins. So the best track analysis that, that we are discussing here are the, the best tracks that are put out by NHC. And so they focus on the, the basins that have responsibility for NHC. So um, this best track is a subjective analysis assessment of TC's center location and intensity and six hourly using all available observations. It includes the center position, maximum surface winds, minimum center pressure and quadrant radii for the 34, 50 and 64 knot winds. And it subjectively smoothed um, for the storm's location and intensity over its lifetime. So it's kind of an old graphic up at the top, but showing um, you know, what those tracks look like um, for a season, um, you know, pretty smoothed out, but um, a good representation of where the location of the storm was during its lifetime. And at the bottom here, I'm just showing um, a clip of what that data looked like. Um, so you can see, you know, you can tell you're working with the best track um, of it's it's called you know, BAL or BEP in the name, but um, you can see the this column here um, for best. And then there's also additional information in the best track that's useful, like the storm category. Here you can see it's tropical storm, um, the storm name, here's Bertha. Um, so you can get some additional information in the, um, the best track as far as the, the characteristics of the storm. All right, and so additionally to get started, you're going to need, um, Everything needs to be in this automated uh, tropical cyclone uh, forecasting system format or ATCF. Um, it was first developed at NRL and it is what is used for NHC operations. And so METTC does um, need the input to be in this format. And you, the tools, you must adhere to um, this to be able to properly parse the input data. So the most important is that you get the first eight columns um, existing. And so here's just a, a clip of that of what a row of that looks like. Um, it's okay to have missing values, but you need to at least have that, that um, you know, entry in there with, you know, the column separated, the comma separated columns. So um, you need to have the eight, the first eight, um, and then any of the additional um, records are, are fine as well. But in order to properly match the data, um, you can't have missing values in some of like the key um, areas. So the, the basin, the cyclone number, the initialization time, the forecast hour, and the model name, pretty critical to be able to make sure that you are um, matching up the data in the proper way. Um, so obviously you need to have those, those information in your, your file. Uh, there's a lot more information outlining the ATCF file format um, as far as all of the common fields that you can include um, beyond just these initial few. And that's in the, the MET user's guide in um, chapter 20, um, section three. And then there's more information as well um, from uh, NRL. So if you go to this website, you can read about the ATCF format. And then finally, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, the model output must be run through an external vortex tracking algorithm to generate um, the, the forecast ATCF format. 
So really any algorithm that obtains, you know, basic position, maximum win, minimum sea level pressure can be used as long as it's adhering to this format. But one that's very um, widely used and freely available is the GFDL vortex tracker. And so um, I've put the link down below. The DTC um, has put out a, uh, a public release of the, of the standalone vortex tracker. Um, it's, it's no longer supported, but it has all the code and the documentation um, that, that one can follow um, to be able to use it. Also, um, recently, Met added the Vortex Tracker um, as that you can compile and run as part of as part of Met Plus. So, um, a few different options to be able to get to um, using the Vortex Tracker if you'd like to um, run that on your model data. All right. So, moving into the actual components for Met TC. So, um, you can see here just the the three main tools that I showed at the beginning. Um, the primary functions of the code are to compute uh, pair statistics from the ATCF input files filter the pair statistics based on user specifications, and compute summary statistics. And so walking through those three different tools, are st I'll start with this TCDLAN. So um, the motivation for having this TCDLAN tool is that we need um, to be able to quickly parse the data for filter jobs. So some of the filtering jobs that are important are being able to verify over water, um, threshold the verification based on the distance to land, and include or exclude forecasts based off of a, spec a specified window to landfall. And so in order to do all of these um, filter jobs, we need to actually know where we're over land and water. Um, and so this TCD land helps generate um, a file that can be used in order to designate where this, where, you know, land, where the land masses are. And so the input for this, um, for this tool is an ASCII file format containing Latin long coordinates for all of the coastlines and islands that would be considered a significant landmass. And so um, there are files that are that are uh, included in the, the MET Plus tools. And so it's under the share MET TC data location. Um, there's this ALAN.dat, which includes the, the Atlantic and the East Pac basins. There is the SHLAN.dat, which includes the Southern Hemisphere and the WLAN.dat, which has um, like the Westpac basins. And so if you run with all three, then you get a global representation of, um, of the land masses. And so the output is shown below. It's a gridded field representing the distance to the nearest coastline or island in NetDCF format. And so I wanted to point out that these two um, files were generated from the input data that, that I've listed, and they are available in the MET plus um, installation. So you, you have access to these files without having to run the tool to generate them. So um, as far as the usage, um, you would call TCDLAND and then give it an output file. And then there's some optional um, uh, arguments as far as overriding the default grid, um, skipping, um, writing the Latin long to reduce the size, um, picking out different land files um, other than the three that were specified and then some information as far as the log file, the verbosity, and the compression. So um, yeah, if you if you want, if you have a desire to be able to generate your own file, you have the ability to do so. Um, but I do want to emphasize that a lot of users are not gonna need to run this tool. They're rather going to just have to use, choose which of those two files to um, select or that you wanna use, whether it's for the, you know, the, the NHC basins or for the global, um, representation and then just give it to TC pairs. So um, there's no need to generate this if you are happy with what's been provided. But also if you do run it on your own, you only really need to run it once. This isn't something that would have to go in a workflow and rerun over time. Once you have the file, it's a static input file um, that you can use for, for all of your verification. Okay, so moving on to TC pairs. So this tool um, produces pair statistics on independent model data, user specified consensus forecasts or probabilistic forecasts. So um, the ADEC uh, matched pairs, so that's the model um, data, contains position errors, um, wind, sea level pressure and distance to land values. Um, and then you also can have EDEC, which is the probabilistic matched pairs that contain probabilistic forecast values um, and the verifying observation values. Um, so the matched, um, it matches the forecast with a reference TC data set, which is, like I said, typically the best track. And then um, pair generation can be subsetted based off of user-defined filtering criteria. And so one thing just to keep in mind from these last two bullets is if you aren't using the best track, um, you do need to pay attention to the fact that some of the filtering 
on columns wouldn't be populated if it's relying on the best track to populate the information. Like let's say the 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 um, the intensity category. Um, if you don't have that column populated because you're using a different reference data set, you may not be able to filter on that because it's not populated. Um, all right. So um, oh, I have this here, but so I just wanted to point out that this is actually um, pretty similar to the the point stat um, tool in that it provides matched pair information from um, point forecast and observations. Oops, now did I? Okay. So the input for TC pairs is a net CDF gridded distance land file, what we just discussed, as well as a forecast and reference data set in ATCF format. Um, the output is this, um, this TC stat or uh, TCST format, which is um, a header with a column based ASCII format, um, which looks similar to all the other um, MET output. Um, the usage is um, that there, you need to give a ADEX source and or an EDEX source. So the ADEX source would be the deterministic model forecast. The EDEC would be the probabilistic track data. You can provide both, but you have to do at least one. Um, and then you also need to give a BDEC source, which would be the reference data set, and then a config file um, that you will be using, as well as some of the other um, uh, optional uh, entries. And so I did want to point out that from the EDEC, um, the TC pairs only reads the probability of rapid intensification for this tool right now. So none of the other probabilities from that file would be able to be um, parsed by TC pairs. Okay, so for the configuration file, um, so here I'm showing a, a glimpse of what that looks like and what some of the different options are. Um, I don't want to go through all of them in detail here, but just wanted to point out that a lot of them are um, you know, basic filtering you know, on the storm ID, the base and the cyclone, initialization times, um, there's also some uh, logic to do things like um, lag the forecast, uh, provide a consensus forecast. Um, there's some um, baseline and operational information, um, handing in a watch warning file to be able to filter on that. So a lot of um, different uh, filtering options that are outlined in the, the user's guide. Um, but one thing to be careful of is not to completely over subset your data because you'll be able to do a filtering job with TC stat. And so it's better to cast a little bit wider um, uh, filtering criteria for the TC pairs, unless you're absolutely sure you want to filter on that right away. And then here's a look at what the, the TC uh, match pair output format looks like. Um, so here's the what the file um, would look like here with the TCMPR line type. And then you can see, um, you know, the the track error and uh, and wind information is output. Um, so just a, a and then the the TCMPR line type um, is shown here. Um, just keep in mind, there's also a prob RI line type that comes out if you do use the the edex um, for the RI probabilities. I wanted to just quickly um, touch on the TC metrics that come out in case those are not from, people are not familiar with that. Um, so track error is the great circle distance between the forecast location and the actual location um, in the nautical miles. And then you have a long track error, which shows how quickly the system, how uh, um, quickly or slowly the system's moving. And then cross track error would indicate the displacement to the right or the left of the observed storm. And then for intensity errors, we're looking at the difference between the forecast and the actual intensity. And you can look at this either in raw intensity errors, which are the bias, or the absolute intensity errors, which would be the magnitude um, of the of the the errors. Okay, and then so TC stat. Um, so this tool provides summary statistics and filtering jobs on the TCST output. So you can have either a filter job that stratifies the pair output for various conditions and thresholds, a summary job that produces summary statistics on a specific column of interest, an RI or W job that intensive that uh, identifies rapid intensification and weakening events and populates a contingency table, and then the prob RI or W job which pro, uh, pro, processes prob RIW lines and populates an N by two contingency table and um, derives probabilistic statistics. So the input is um, the TCST output from TC pairs and then um, the output from uh, TC stat is uh, one of the, the uh, from one of the, the jobs shown above. And so this is similar to the stat analysis and that it has filter and summary jobs. Um, so quickly looking at the usage, um, so you just have to mainly give it a look in source that has the location of the TC pairs output, and then you have the configuration file, um, and you can also put the job line um, 
uh, the job list in the command line that um, for one of the jobs I just showed. And so I'll note that you can put it either in the config file or on the command line, but if it's um, in both, the configure file will override the, the command line. All right, looking at the, the filter, um, or I'm sorry, the configuration files. Again, uh, we have filter jobs. Um, a lot of these are repeat from the uh, TC pairs, but you also have some additional ones um, like having to do with where landfall is, um, uh, you know, before or after time-wise or, or distance-wise, looking at um, event equalization, um, stratifying over water only. Um, let's see. Uh, basically, you can see them all listed here. So there's a lot of other um, stratifications that you can that you can do um, in the TC stat over and above what's in the TC pairs. Um, and then we have that, again that jobs that I mentioned that you can put in your config file. Um, so just moving through this quickly, and I'm hitting the 20 minute mark here. So um, TC stat, um, here we show the analysis jobs. Um, like I mentioned before, you can just see what they look like if you were to call them on the command line for um, the filter summary, the RIRW and the prob RI um, types. And then um, the filter output. Um, so for filtering, it looks basically just like the TC pairs output is a TCST file that has um, the filtering applied. And then for the summary job output, you can um, have these uh, outputs, which are listed in the table here. You can look at um, you know, the frequency of spirit performance or get the uh, center deviation, confidence intervals. You can do that on um, each column that's in um, specifying a certain column, or you can use the buy option, which I think was probably discussed in the, the stat analysis tool. And so when operating on the columns, you can look at a specific column like truck error or a difference of two columns like um, the, the you know, A wind and B wind to be able to get the, the bias for the wind. And then we also have some of these shortcuts that I've listed to be able to make it easier to deal with the track and wind, um, you know, common, common uh, values that you'd want to operate on. Uh, for the RRW job, this produces contingency table counts and statistics um, defined by inten rapid intensification or weakening events in the A deck and B deck. So here you can see the configuration options. Basically, we've made it so that you can change the threshold um, for the time in the window to go beyond just the, the you know, 30 knots over 24 hours if you're interested in doing that and making some um, decisions about how close the, the A deck and B deck need to be to be considered a hit or a, a correct negative. Um, and then you get the contingency table counts out so that you can um, populate a, a table as shown. And then for the prob RI or W job, this produces probabilistic contingency table counts and statistics defined by placing forecast probabilities and best track rapid intensification events into an N by two contingency table. So um, here you can see again, um, what those options are as far as defining, um, you know, the maximum change and, and how close the events are to be able to be considered a correct, a hit or a correct negative. And then I wanted to just point out one more time that the RIW capability is only using, the e, um, is the only capability for the EDEX and the TC stat, but the Genesis probabilities that are in this file are handled in TC Gen, which we'll talk about here later this hour. And then finally, there are some graphic tools that are included in the MET installation. Um, so I've just listed those here. Um, some extra information as far as how you need to set up your environment to be able to use those. And then I'll, uh, I'll finish up with just showing a few examples of what those plots look like um, that you can make um, from the tcmpr.r script that's included in the in the installation. So um, yeah, that is what I have for the TC stat and TC pairs um, for today. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was great and a lot of information there. Um, John actually asked a question on uh, how frequently should we run TC pairs and TC stat? For example, do you re recommend that we run TC pairs once a model initialization, once per storm, once per season? And then what about TC stat? Um, I guess it depends on what your workflow looks like. Um, if you're doing more of like a, a real time setup, you may want to run TC pairs. Um, I mean, every 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 initialization might be a bit much, but you could just run through it every time you have data if you want and just populate it. But I normally would run like at least a storm or a larger amount of time. And then um, I would say definitely the TC stat you would run when you have, you know, a data set that you want to get the aggregated statistics on. So the, the pairs I would definitely run more frequently depending on how you have your workflow set up as far as how quickly you want to, to get those statistics generated. If that's a good answer. Okay. Great question, John, and thank you, Catherine. Uh, do we have any other questions while I um, start sharing my screen to, to do the hands-on for TC pairs and TC stat? 
Yeah, I, I have a question. <clears throat> and I apologize if I missed this, but suppose you have you're comparing two different forecasts. Um, do you have to do everything independently for each forecast? Or is there a way that you can combine, uh, you know, compare the two while you're running through the, the process? Um, let me see if I understand what you're asking. So are you asking, do you have to match each track independently? Or I, I, I guess it, I, I'm under the impression that you, at some point, you have to run um, each individual forecast through these steps to get the, the input for the next TC tool, but then is one of these tools or maybe one of the R programs, are they capable of plotting comparisons of two different for two, so let's say model A and model B for the same forecast period versus best track or, you know, and errors and that sort of thing? Yep. You have to do it one, one at a yeah, time. Yeah, so right? if I'm, I'm understanding what you're asking. So you could run each of them through, and then if you want to have um, statistics that are off of the same like doing a homogeneous sample, is that what you're asking? So you could you'd then take all of your different TC pairs output and then run TC stat and get statistics over each of the independent, each of the models compared to each other. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes, you can do that. So in the TC stat, we do have um, event equalization. So you can either equalize, you know, across everything. And then you can also pick out which lead times you want to equalize that are required that you have all of this, all of the data present. Okay. Okay. I really enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, and, and to add on to that, that, that's where the frequency of superior performance um, that, that Catherine mentioned, that's a, a measure of if you're comparing, you know, multiple um, models, looking to see which one has, you know, the, the best um, track errors or, or um, you know, intensity errors or, or whatever, um, you know, possibly with lead time or, or whatever. Um, and so that, those are outputs from stat analysis. So um, there is some embedded um, uh, uh, measures that you can you can have to, to compare models. Um, just really quick, uh, Marion has a, a question um, also in the chat. Maybe um, in the interest of time, Catherine, if you could, could go ahead and, and look at that and, and um, address her question, um, yep. that would be great. Um, I also wanted to point out that the R statistics um, plotting that Catherine mentioned at the end of the presentation, um, while that is uh, our support right now for um, the plotting measures, uh, we do have intention of transitioning that over to Python and have it be more part of the MET plus package without the R um, statistics dependency um, in the very near, near future. So um, watch for, for that to become available. Probably, um, you know, well, certainly, uh, not in this release, in the next release, but hopefully available in the beta release for people to test out as well. Okay, so why don't we switch gears and just so I can show you a little bit of hands-on. Um, I may curtail this a little bit so that we can get over to Catherine again so she can talk about the other tools because they're um, new and interesting. Uh, so if, if you go to the practical session, which I have loaded here, um, we're skipping down. We actually um, had track and intensity kind of buried into um, uh, the um, session with feature relative use cases. And so we've elevated that up to um, track and, uh, to its own session. So we're skipping past um, the, the um, ensemble and PQPF and, and the mode and mode time domain at this point, and we're skipping to track and intensity. Um, if we go ahead and click on that, um, uh, we're not gonna go over the hands-on for the, the actual MET tools per se, but rather once again, just show you how to run it with MET plus. Um, so uh, the first uh, demonstration we're going to have is MET plus um, use case for TC pairs. So I'm clicking on that. Um, just a reminder, uh, um, I already went ahead and you know CD CD'd into my tutorial directory. Once again, I'm running on a Linux server, just a you know a basic Linux server where MET um, uh, plus has been installed in user local bin um, and, and so forth. And, and just kind of working in my own personal directory. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clear this so that we have a clear screen to, to look at. Rather than showing you how to CD, I am going to copy and paste. Um, and let's take a look at what is available for use cases already in the MET tools wrapper um, portion of, of the MET plus install. So this you know, provides you a baseline to get started with using um, the tools. 
So if um, we look in uh, PARM, Use Cases, Met Tools, Wrapper, TC Pairs, you'll notice that there are actually two configuration files. There is TC Extra Tropical um, and TC Pairs um, Tropical. Uh, we have this um, uh, split out because there are some configuration options that we need to address for a particular format um, that is used by EMC um, for extratropical cyclone tracking and, and um, so forth. So I also wanted to point out that TC pairs can be used on both extratropical and tropical cyclones. Um, and uh, the GFDL tracker has the ability to identify um, extra TC as well as TCs. So in this case, why don't we go ahead and, um, and look at just the, the standard tropical cyclone um, example. So I'm going to just use less to open it up because I, all I want to do is look at it. I don't want to edit it. Um, and here's a list uh, underneath of things that um, have been set that you may want to pay attention to. So the process list is TC pairs. Um, we have, uh, if you scroll down a little bit further, Um, uh, uh, Catherine was talking about the TC pairs DLAND file. So this is, um, you know, where you, where that can be found. Um, sorry, I scrolled too quickly. There we go. Um, so this is the, um, the con configuration file. Um, we have our, um, initialization and, end um, end time. Looking for model. I'm just going to do model. There. Um, and then uh, this is where you can specify looking at, at different models um, and pulling out the, the uh, match pairs for different models. So in this case, um, we're listing um, four or five different models that we, we're hoping to, to pull our data for. Um, you know, you can see here how you can, um, if you want to, only pull out particular storm IDs, um, basins. Um, in this case, we're, we're um, looking at uh, the cyclone um, number six. Um, once again, that can be a, a common delimited list and so forth. Um, and then just looking at where the data are um, for this. This is um, the data that we're working with is part of the MET um, uh, test release, part of the, the, um, the um, release bundle. Um, and, um, and then we have our, um, you know, uh, how to write the, the data out to um, you know, the, the particular uh, directory and so forth. So um, I, I'm just kind of curious to know how we came up with um, this list of model names, because to me that, that seems they're, you know, they're kind of different model names and so forth. Um, and so um, let's go ahead and, and just look in the, uh, the directory. Um, there we go. Let's go ahead and, and look in the directory um, where the, the input data are. You can see that um, actually there's um, four directories um, that are listed, and uh, the uh, MYGF is, is not actually there. So we, we won't expect to see any data from MYGF. Um, additionally, then if you uh, were to to look inside one of the directories, um, you can see that um, the way that the, the um, files are set up is um, for this, um, this uh, storm six, um, and then there are um, track information for all the different initializations. Um, and, and it's different for each one of the models. So TC um, can handle that, TC pairs can handle that. So why don't we go ahead and run the, use, the first use case. And you can see it scrolling out to the screen. Um, you can see that it's um, it went ahead and, and you know picked up the, the models and, and so forth. And you can see what command is actually being um, called um, and the specification of the BDEX and the ADEX um, and, and so forth. Um, and why don't we go ahead and, and look at um, some of the output. And this time I'm going to use VI um, just because um, I want to be able to actually read those um, lines and, and do a, a no wrap. So what I did is I did a colon set no wrap at the bottom. Um, and you can see here uh, that if you look at it, <clears throat> as far as um, models go, we have um, um, match pairs, TC um, 
uh, match pairs for control and MYNN models. Um, and uh, all of them are using the, the best for the BDEC. Um, and if you were to scroll across, you'd see um, the, the um, match pair um, data that uh, uh, Catherine had pointed out. I'm just going to go to the end um, and show you, you know, that it, it's a fairly long line. Okay. Um, uh, just, uh, just to show you really quick um, what happens if, if models are not available. Um, if you go to the, the um, one on, for the 18Z uh, initialization, um, you will see here that all we have is control, and we don't even have MYNN, and that's because um, there is no data for MYNN at the um, 18Z initialization. But I am curious to know why um, there, uh, there aren't uh, entries for H19C and H19M. We were expecting not to see MYGLF. Um, so why don't we go ahead and, and look at some of the raw data? Um, so this is once again um, back at the, the um, actually, I'll just run with it. Um, you'll notice here in the fifth column, you can see that there, uh, there, this is the model name that is listed. Um, and you'll notice that it's different. It's each lapped, which I, I believe is configuration of, of the um, h -warf that was being tested. But notice um, we were looking in the control directory. So you would have, I, I would have expected to see control um, as the, the model in the control directory. And similarly, if you look at um, one of the other ones, here is where you can find the control in the um, uh, H19C directory. And if you look through the other two, you, you'll see a, a mismatch or flip-flop on, on, on the naming convention. Basically, um, while this is kind of confusing, um, to me, it, it's good because of what it demonstrates is that um, the TC pairs is not looking at the, the naming convention at all. It's not looking at the path or, or the name of the data that it's being passed in. It's actually looking in the ATCF files um, for the model names and then uh, extracting those. Um, so uh, um, in the interest of time, I, let me just really um, quickly run through. Uh, showing you that if you add in how to how to um, how to add change the the models. So if we go to here, we take out M Y G F because we don't really need it, and we add in H lat. And if you had looked in the other um, files, you would have seen H L. MY is another um, model name, once again, configuration probably of H, H wharf. We add those in um, and we go ahead and, and rerun TC pairs. We're kind of running it again. Um, you will uh, see that it ran. Um, if we look at Um, some of the data. Oh, I didn't want to run it again. I forgot to copy. There we go. Um, now you'll see that uh, we have all the models represented. Um, HLMY, control, MINN and HLAT here in the, the second column. And so then we have the TC pairs for that. Okay, so moving on to TC stat real quick. Um, I'm, you know, we, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you the, the, um, the TC stat configuration file that's available. I thought I copied it, sorry about that. Okay, um, and once again, things to, to um, pay attention to is, you know, the process list is just TC stat. If you scroll down, um, you'll notice that uh, this is how you would specify the job types that you would like to, um, to include in, um, 
uh, in uh, the, uh, the computation. Um, and so in this case, we're calling a summary job. Um, we're looking at um, column A speed, and we're just dumping out the, the data that's being used to, to do that summary um, and so forth. Um, and uh, these are the dates over which um, we're looking. So it's a different data set than what we were looking at before. If you were to look at that data set, you would notice that the basin is ML, which um, stands for mid-latitude. So this is an example of running on extratropical cyclone data. Um, and uh, you know, it, the, once again, the, the data are included in the, um, the MET test bundle. Um, so we're not, gonna, we're not running this example on the, the data that we just ran on just a minute ago. Um, we're going to go ahead and run it. You can see that it's taking a lot more time. Um, if you were to go and look at the input file, um, in, input directory, you would see that there is a lot of, um, a lot of data um, in, in those directories. Um, so that's why it took a little bit longer. Um, and then if you were to look at the output, this is the output from the dump row um, call. And once again, you can see that this basically looks very similar to um, what we just saw in TC pairs, where um, you know you have um, all the the specific information for each one of the initializations and the matching of of the data between the A deck and B deck. So that's actually not um, you know the the um, the point of running um, TC pairs or TC stat. The the point is to to try and um, find the or to try and, and have some summary of the, of the data. Um, um, but uh, what, we, what I noticed when I was um, building this hands-on um, tutorial is that right now we do not have support for the dash out command line option, which is what you can, um, you can use to have um, the, the summary information writ written out to a separate file. Instead, um, without that, without using the dash out, what winds up happening is that the data are written out as standard output to the, to the screen. So in this case, with MET Plus with the wrappers, um, that standard output is actually captured in the log file. So I just want to demonstrate that to you. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and look at where the logs were written, which um, you can see is um, it, the way it's specified is in output TC stat logs. And Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and quickly look at the log file. And if you look down at the bottom, you will see um, where the, the um, information is written out. So you can see that um, it, it uh, has all of these different um, uh, statistics, max, mean, min, um, um, you know, the quantiles, interquartile range. Um, uh, the t uh, frequency of superior performance and so forth. But in this case, you'll notice that um, it only says NA. And after digging around a little bit, I noticed it's because um, what we had set in the config file was um, A speed um, with quotes around it. And um, that uh, actually uh, causes, um, causes an issue. So if you remove the, the quotes around A speed, um, which I, I'm not going to demonstrate right now. Um, and uh, if you if you go through this um, this hands-on, you'll see how to modify the, um, the configuration, add um, take remove the quotes around a speed. I also um, put in there uh, a way to um, you know add in looking at track error. Um, and and if you were to run it, then um, what what you would um, wind up with in the log file is a summary of a speed and you can actually see that there are um, values for most of the um, different uh, summary measures as well as um, you would then see track error as well um, and then um, once again in the interest of time um, so we can see uh, about uh, the other two tools i'm not going to physically run through this but um, once again feel free to go ahead and and you know copy the config file to a third one and modify it a little bit, um, maybe change a speed 
um, which is um, many times not populated in the ATCF format into something like a max wind. That's the recommendation from uh, that I that I received from John Halligatway, which is much more readily available. And then also, um, you know, try and, and stratify by storm type. So you'll see here what the the job summary um, looks like, where um, we've changed a speed to a max wind. We still have um, column track error, but then we also put in storm name. And um, and then when you close that out and run um, t, uh, um, the TC stat um, configuration through there, then what you'll see is um, that you have um, a, a whole bunch of um, information for all the different storms um, that are listed in the, the directory um, for AMAX wind. Um, and the storm ID, uh, let's see, storm, storm total, storm, I think it's storm name, column, storm name, um, column, storm name. Um, so, so the storm names um, for at least some of this uh, mid latitude is kind of wonky. It, it, so it's like minus 109, and one, minus 118, and so forth. Anyway, so you have AMAX wind, and then if you scroll down further, you'll see track error for the same storms and, and so forth. So now there's 48 lines summarizing AMAX wind um, and track error for these 24 named um, storms, um, which are all, in this case, extratropical cyclones. Um, so I, I encourage you to, to go through this and, and run through it um, on your own, and then actually uh, maybe stretch and, and go ahead and try and run um, TC stat on the TC pairs output that we just did in, in the previous hands-on. So um, while I uh, quit, sharing. Um, do we have questions that um, we want to address here or that we have we addressed everything in chat? There's one question about definition of depression versus storm um, and I think we can handle that one in chat. Um, so at, at this point, um, unless there's more uh, questions in the interest of time, Sorry, Catherine, I cut you a little short too, but um, maybe you can um, do a quick introduction of TCRMW and TCGen. Yep, sounds good. I can hopefully get this to work this time. All right, do you see my screen in full screen? Uh, it is only in, present, uh, in um, uh, editing mode again. Oh my goodness. Still not? It's still not. I mean, if you want to, uh, if you want to just shrink that side and, and have it be in, in, pre, in editing mode, like, no. Really annoying, but okay. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I don't know good. what's going on. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to be briefly uh, discussing um, two other uh, tropical cyclone tools, the TCRMW and the uh, TC Gen. And I realized after I put these together that a lot of the features that I am uh, discussing are actually not in the 10.0. I mean, the, the, the basic functionality is there, but there are some features that are not in the 10.0 release. And so um, there are a few features that uh, that you'll have to look forward to here coming out in the next release. Let's see if we can, oh, there we go. All right, so quickly um, looking at where this lives on the, the MET diagram. So this is um, first the TCRMW tool. Um, and I'll mention that there's also a TC or an RMW analysis tool that's similar to TC stat and stat analysis will do some aggregation of this um, of the statistic tool. I didn't mention it in this um, slide deck, uh, just interest of time, um, but just be aware that that does exist as well. So a quick overview of the TCRMW tool. Um, so this tool regrids tropical cyclone model data, data from the native model grid to a storm-centered cylindrical grid centered on um, the points along the storm track. And so um, this capability was um, developed, um, modeled from a, a software that came out of uh, the NOAA um, HRD lab. Um, and so they um, have this diapo software that does the similar type of um, regridding to a cylindrical grid, um, gets things in storm centric coordinates. And so we, um, given how useful that tool is, we wanted to implement that into the MET software. And so um, looking at the usage, um, so uh, a couple of required um, things you need to first give um, 
this data is specifying a gridded um, file or a file list that includes all of the different gridded files. This is your um, UPP output. Um, and then you have your DEC source, which is your ATCF format data um, source. And, and note, in this case, this is this would be um, the, the track file that comes out of running like the vortex tracker on your model data. So they're, they're um, correlated with each other, your model data and your, your track data. And then there's a configuration file, and then you specify the output um, name of the file netcdf that you want written. Okay, so input output, this is a little bit redundant. Um, as far as the input, one thing that I wanted to note is that um, the model forecast files um, must match the lead times in the ATCF tracker file. Um, if you run them on the same um, data, likely they'll already be that way, but just be aware if you have a different, um, uh, you know, if you have six hourly data in your tracker file and hourly model output, you do need to make sure that those match up um, for what you're giving the tool or else it will um, give you an error. Um, so for the output, what comes out are the specified files in the configuration file on range azimuth grid along with um, along the track points. Um, so each of the, the variables have um, a range azimuth pressure and track direct uh, dimension. All right, so just looking at the, the configuration file, it's pretty short. Um, you have this, this top section that looks basically like a lot of the other MET configuration files that have the model and, and the different variables. Um, the more interesting part is down at the bottom where you can specify some of this information for the range azimuth grid um, parameters. So um, you can, you know, this N range is the number of equally spaced um, range intervals, um, and azimuth is the number of equally spaced azimuth intervals. Um, Max range uh, is the range in kilometers. Delta range is the spacing of the range rings. And then you have this RMW scale, which overrides the max range kilometer parameter. Um, and so when that's set, um, your direct spacing will be in units of RMW. Um, so I just, there's more information in the user's guide on that as well. All right, so just a quick look at what uh, this looks like when you run. Um, so in this case, I'm running with a file that points to all of my um, my output my model output that's been run through UPP and then the uh, track file and then um, configuration file and then this is the output um, and this is what the down below what the uh, output that's that prints to the screen that you'll see when you run the tool and you can see that you write an output file um, in that CDF uh, that has now converted all of your your model output um, on your native grid into this um, storm centric coordinate and then I'm um, looking at the output. So the file, I just did a quick dump on the on the NetCF uh, file on the right side here. You can see you have range, azimuth, track points, pressure um, for all of the different variables that were um, specified in the config file at the different levels that were um, pressure levels that were in the config file. And um, I wanted to point out that in MET Plus, um, there is a vertical interpolation um, routine that can convert pressure into height coordinates that's coming out with the, the next Metcal Pi uh, release. And then there's also a plotting um, utility to do cross sections that's shown above um, so that uh, you can plot up um, some, some cross sections of the data that come out of the tool. So, um, and like, like I mentioned, there's the RMW analysis tool as well that um, then could be used and run on the output of the RMW, uh, TCRMW tool. Okay, so, we keep moving. Um, so this is now look talking about the TC Gen tool. Um, so the overview for TC Gen is that this uh, producing reliable TC Genesis forecast is an important metric for NWP, um, global NWP, and the operations. Uh, TC Gen provides verification of deterministic and probabilistic tropical cyclone genesis forecasts for both ATCF files and shape file formats. Um, so here's the usage for this. Um, we have a genesis source, an edex source, and a shape source, which I'll go into more detail on here. Um, you need to have at least one of these, um, but you do not need to have all of them. Um, so at least one is required. And then there's also a track source. Um, so the genesis source is one or more ATCF files um, that are, or a Fort 66 file, which is basically the output from the GFDL vortex tracker or another, um, you know, for vortex tracker that is in genesis mode. So that looks a little different than the than the um, the output that was talked about in the last presentation. And um, the edex source would be one or more ATCF edex files containing probability of genesis, or a shape source, which is one or more NHC genesis warning area shape files. 
Um, and so those are the area warning files corresponding to the two, five, and seven day probability values. And then there's a track source, and that can be um, the best track analysis and or the operational track data that you would pull the CAR-Q line from. And so optimally, you'll give the best track analysis. Um, well, that would be your first choice, but optimally you'd give both because there's logic that I'll show in a later slide to choose um, to look at both the best track and the operational track to find the genesis. Um, and then there's a configuration file. All right, so um, looking at these three different inputs. So for the genesis, this is identifying genesis events for both the forecast and the reference data sets. And then applying the user-defined configuration files to pair the forecast and reference data sets um, and then categorize hits, misses, and false alarms. Um, for the EDEC, this is the um, identifying the genesis events in the reference data set, so like the best track, and then applying user um, specified configuration files to pair the forecast probabilities to the reference genesis events. And then the pairs are added to an n by two probabilistic contingency table. And then for the shape file, that defines up to three different corresponding prob probability values. So you have a percentage of probability of genesis within the shape for 48 hours, um, 120 hours or um, 168 hour probabilities. And so this is done on each of those independent lead times. And so for each probability and shape, the reference data uh, genesis events are searched for a match and then the pairs are added to the N by two contingency table. Um, so I've added some links um, for where you can get the EDEC um, and the best track, um, different deck data and, and the ADEX for the, for the CAR-Q and then a link for getting um, the shape file warning areas. Um, so you need both the database and the shape files out of that. So there's two um, different methods for a TC Genesis forecast. There's a development method and operational or operations method. Basically what it comes down to is the development method. Um, you verify whether the BDEC Genesis occurs within temporal and spatial windows that were um, defined by the user and then compared to the forecast Genesis valid time and location. So this may be useful for a developer. Um, we thought that that was a useful um, way to look at Genesis events, but we also wanted to have an operational, you know, follow the way that NHC operations use their, um, for their tropical weather outlook forecast. And so the difference here for the operations method is that it verifies whether the BDEC Genesis occurs within a user defined timeframe, um, given uh, the Genesis, the forecast in initial time. So looking at the init time versus the, the valid time, and it's more dependent on um, timing. Um, and so it looks at both the B deck and the A deck to be able to establish a connection between the forecast and an existing storm or disturbance. So I'm just going to leave this here. I wasn't actually going to talk about this anyways, but I thought this was a really useful um, flowchart that was developed by Dan Halperin, who was the PI on the, the project that, that um, put together this, this tool. Um, so if you're really trying to understand the logic, I think this is a really helpful tool to work through as far as how your different config options impact um, which uh, the develop method versus the, uh, the ops method and some of your other criteria like using the car queue versus the BDEC, um, where your time windows fall in and how that would impact a false alarm versus a, a hit. So I'm just going to leave that in, in the slides. And then walking through the configuration file, again, interest of time, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I wanted to just point out that um, there's really three sections to the configuration file. The first is defining the, the genesis event. So looking at the, the um, the init frequency, um, how the genesis criteria are um, determined, and then um, figuring out, you know, the, the genesis time is the valid time of the first track where all the points, where all the criteria are met. So you would go back in your best track and find that first point where you'd set like a, a, a TD or a TS, you know, user defined as this is when I have genesis. You would look back at that, at the when you made that match and you'd find the first time and that's your genesis time. Um, second, our options is subset and filter. So this is very similar to the, all the other MET tools. And then finally, we have controls for the output. And so um, there's just some flags here to be able to determine um, whether or not you have a hit in your radius or your time window, um, some flags for when you discard a forecast, and then um, the different output flags for um, the, the, the different output that comes out of the tool. And so this is my last slide. Um, this is um, just showing the output. Um, so you get the tcgen.stat, which can be used in the TC or in the stat analysis tool. Um, and then we have um, the different uh, contingency table output for the for the deterministic and then for um, the, the probabilistic contingency tables as well. And then I just put um, down below uh, a screenshot of the output and you can see the different 
um, Genesis Dev and Ops correspond to those two different methods that I talked about, the probability of Genesis, and then the Genesis shape files, so all the different um, input files that are available. All right, so that, that's what I have, and we're right at 10 o'clock, so um, hopefully that wasn't uh, too much information, too quick, but um, uh, the slides, I think, are, are going to be available, so um, if you have any questions. That was spectacular. Thank you, Catherine. Um, and we have linked in um, the, uh, the PDF of the slides so people can refer to them um, right now. Do we have any um, really quick questions? Um, okay. Um, so uh, thank you once again, Catherine. Um, to everyone else, we will be meeting again next week and, and going over uh, what is coming up in the, the Met Plus 4.1 um, release, 4.1.0. Um, and I just wanted to note that um, we do have an issue, that it, a development issue for support of that dash out um, uh, command line option um, so that you can write um, TC stat output to a, a separate file using the plus wrappers rather than just having it in the log file. And we're looking to um, to squeeze that in and get that into the 4.1.0 release. Um, so uh, thank you for your attention and we will see you next week. <laughs>